Welcome. You're listening to Nudity, a podcast where we get naked with our feelings. I'm Kimberly. And I'm Wendy. And in this podcast, we talk about food, sex, travel, our favorite things, and much more. Sometimes we have special guests. So thanks for listening in. And on today's episode, Kim and I talk about our success story from 2018. Happy New Year's, everyone. Our New Year's resolution that we made. Yes, we made a New Year's resolution last year where we wanted to read at least one book per month. And that could be any book. I just wanted to make sure that I read more because in 2017, I think I only read like six books that entire year, which seemed kind of pathetic right. because we both love to read. Mm -hmm. We just don't make time for it somehow. And there's just so much TV content out there. And you know how much I love my TV? <laughs> okay, I don't watch as much TV. I am I just had other things that for some reason I didn't find the time to mm -hmm. read. So, so we made it a priority. Yeah, and I really wanted to spend more time reading books maybe a little outside of my comfort zone. So a little bit mm -hmm. more like economics, a little bit more history and politics. Um, a little bit more, I guess I read a lot of like science-based books already, but just more and less novels. So today... Should we talk first about the tea? Oh, drinking? we always forget the tea. We'll be okay. good at it. It's fine. So I am drinking Sunset Matcha from David's Tea. I always make this one too strong and today I made it too weak and I'm sad. <laughs> You'll get there eventually. The perfect, the perfect Sunset Matcha will I lost my matcha happen. spoon. I broke it. Um, and I'm drinking French Hazelnut. I actually don't remember who it's from. It's from, if anyone lives in Toronto, it's from the CNE. It's from, from one of the tea booths. Okay. I love hazelnuts, so mm -hmm. I'm all for it, and it's delicious. It's a good, good morning wake up if you don't want your, like, um, berry or floral mm -hmm. fruit kind of teas. Yeah. Mine's like matcha with a hint of citrus. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And beet. There's beet in there. That's why it's all, like, not green looking. It looks like sewer water now because of the beet. So appetizing. Yes. Okay, so we were saying we wanted to take our year in review and go through some of uh, the top three books or graphic novels or whatever it is that we read and then talk about why we like them so much, talk about our least favorite, and then slide in an audible mention if we have time. Because the goal is at least one book a month. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to read graphic novels, plays, poetry books, and novels. I read, I read it all. Mm -hmm. So we had to make a little bit of an amendment where I decided like five graphic novels to maybe Wendy's one novel mm -hmm. um, when I was doing that. So yeah, I just I, let you figure that out because I don't read graphic novels. I'm like, I don't know how long this takes. You figure it out. You yeah. decide. I read a lot of graphic novels this year. <laughs> to make, yeah, five seems like pretty intense. It wasn't every month, but... Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Do you want to start? Mm, I usually start. You can go. Okay. So... I'm just going to list the top three. So the way I did this was every time I finished a book, I would write it down on my list and I would give it a rating out of 10. So it was an easy job for me. I just looked through my list and picked the top three. You were such more, you were so much more thorough than I was. And then you were like, we should do one of our episodes about this. And I'm like, I can't remember everything I've read. And yeah, we, to... we decided to do this before the podcast. I thought we were just kind of going to have a little book club out of it. And at the end of the year, be like, ooh, here's everything we've read. But no. Which I was not told for about. Real I was not told about this book club either. But I thought I told you at some point. Yeah. I failed. Okay. So, number three is Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, who is a super prolific Great book, yeah. um, writer. And I read this one while I was in China. It took me, no joke, probably like 24 hours to read. It was so good, I could not stop. It talks about people who are extraordinary and their circumstances and the environmental aspects that allow them to be extraordinary so it talks about like yes individual talent is involved but there's like a lot of other things involved in when you were born the time of year you were born um, like the like yeah. the time like which decade you were born in which time in society were you born in that all makes a person in addition to their personal talents extraordinary so the outliers of mm -hmm. society um, and I thought that was really interesting. It takes a really, I don't know, how, like how much of this stuff do you take to heart? 
I don't know. Like, it's, it's just an interesting perspective mm-hmm. to read about, and I really enjoyed that. Have you read his others? I have. Mm-hmm. This year, I also read, um, I can't remember. Tipping Point was his. Mm-hmm. That was, like, his first, I think. Yeah, I can't remember. I didn't like that one as much. I feel like I have another one of his books that I have to get through on my shelf. Mm-hmm. Um, but those are the two of his that I read this year. Tipping Point was like, it got a 6 out of 10 on my list. Really? <laughs> yeah. Outliers was a straight up 10 out of 10. Do you think it was just the topic or do you think it wasn't as well I structured? don't. I didn't find the stories as... Compelling. riveting yeah it wasn't as compelling for me I, I remember reading tipping point and i was, you enjoyed I was it? Uh, yeah i was a lot younger though i think oh. it was high school yeah i just it didn't leave the as good of an impression on me as outliers did and i kind of cheated here so my number two spot goes to the tiger's wife by taya obrett i don't know if i'm saying her name right um she this book only got a nine out of ten but i just stuck it in the second spot because i it's such a it's such a warm feeling story Mm -hmm. so it's a fictional novel um and it talks about this girl's relationship with her grandfather and basically her grandfather at some point in his life um just goes off on like a wild trip to find magic basically i don't want to say too much because it's kind of like the entire story is like based around this like one weird idea of like immortality slash mortality Mm -hmm. and there it's a family of doctors so her grandfather is a doctor and she's a doctor and she's basically going around different villages to help the children there um or refugees whatever and there's like a war that happens and this is after the war and it's just i love stories that take you in to the setting really well Mm -hmm. and this book just it formulated such a good mental picture of everything that was going on Mm -hmm. and the stories were all linked together in such a way where it's kind of like at at the end you're just like what happened everything it happened so quickly Yeah. yeah so it was it was super super enjoyable it was kind of like an impromptu purchase for me this mm-hmm. one um but i'm really glad i will say I it's it. a hard balance to strike sometimes with um authors to not get too um descriptive about the imagery because mm-hmm. it around. leaves something for you to imagine but they for do yourself. it well enough to yeah you can yeah. really get a good base and like I hated Lord of the Flies when I was reading Oh, really? It. And that was, I think I had a real problem with, I'm like, why are you still describing this, like, <laughs> Stop. jungle? So that's mm-hmm. cool that this one probably struck yeah. the balance. Should have left that one here for you to read, but I trucked it home <laughs> with all my other books to make room for new it's books. fine. Um, okay. And the top number one spot, which I think you already know, I kind of- is by our... <laughs> Our main bitch, okay. J.K. Yeah. Rowling. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a fan of Harry Potter, which we are, like, yes. huge fans. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is the book, The Casual Vacancy. And it's basically not Harry Potter at all. There's no magic. It's not set in, like, some weird place. It's literally just a small town in England somewhere. And it talks about um, this parish person like i don't know what happens in churches in their names but someone on like the parish council or something has passed away and it talks about the events after um after his passing Mm -hmm. and it's just it's like so much emotion and character development and again like putting you into everyone's everyone's shoes and everyone's stories and it's just like there's lust, there's teenage angst. You get a lot of adult angst as well, which is, she puts it in a very different light. Like you can see the struggles of being an adult, Mm -hmm. even when you're in like a really great position. It's just everyone has their own quirks and insecurities and faults and sins <laughs> so it's it's just it's so good which is nice to hear that she can also do adult angst relatively well because i mean yeah if you think even back to the harry potter books i wouldn't say any one um adult was they always felt very almost put together mm-hmm. with like maybe a little bit of like Sirius black obviously had his troubles but he mm-hmm. still felt very put together yeah um, and like I guess, like, Dumbledore and Snape are, but those are very, they're very, like, surface level. It's just, like, Mm -hmm. guilt for having done something, but this book 
it drags you through their mud and it mm-hmm. tells you like oh like through this period of time their feelings change and they flip flop and that's often what angst being adult is you just kind of like i don't know how i feel it's mm-hmm. all lies so that one was excellent but gotta say it's really emotional <laughs> it's really like i don't often cry a lot at movies or books anymore um and this one oh i shed a tear <laughs> a single tear was shed but it was just it was just really hard to read like she doesn't hold back it's dark it gets dark yeah you took it home right i, I yeah. totally did yeah, I totally meant to get around to reading I it. I thrifted that book, too. I got oh. it at the thrift store for, like, four bucks. What a steal. So worth it. Thrift and everything. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Those are my top three. Okay. So, we'll go with my top three. I did read novels, I promise you, but all my top three are graphic novels. <laughs> so That's cool. Um, I actually still have mine kicking around. I didn't take them home. <laughs> so, the first one is, I mean, the third one is Being Super. It's mm-hmm. a Supergirl graphic novel Mm -hmm. i read a lot of supergirl earlier in the year because it's how many are in this series in this series in particular or just like supergirl in general oh it's oh i don't i don't know (laughs) so um, in this series i guess first of all this one is written by mariko tamaki Mm -hmm. she's also written ones that we've or at least we both have skim skim Mm -hmm. um and she wrote that with her cousin Mm -hmm. jillian um, and then she also wrote This One Summer. Both great, like, mm-hmm. coming of age, um, mm-hmm. kind of like, they feel like simple stories, but it's very rooted in, I just, there's just so much turmoil, but, like, you can feel for the characters. It's mm-hmm. very relatable kind of deal. I don't know if you felt that reading Skim. Mm-hmm. But to take Supergirl and really kind of almost separate her from the oh, she's a superhero and she does this and all this stuff. She's like, it's very rooted. Like, I honestly cried while I was reading this. And I don't, okay, I do cry at everything. I'm the opposite mm-hmm. of you. I cry at everything. But this is Movies, definitely. Movies, books, plays. The first, um, <laughs> the first graphic, Supergirl graphic novel that I ended up crying at. Mm-hmm. Um, it just, it felt very rooted while still delving into like her dealing with obviously being alone um, she grew up with very different parents besides the Kents that Superman grew up with. Aww. And in general, okay, why I'm reading Supergirl graphic novels in the first place, because most of my shelf for my graphic novels is, like, sci-fi mm-hmm. or fiction-based. I'm very much, like, I don't delve into the superhero genre, mm-hmm. but I'm watching the Supergirl TV show, and I was like, I kind of want to read more. It's your guilty pl- it's That guilty show pleasure. is your guilty pleasure. <laughs> it's, it's not great, but, like, it is my guilty pleasure. But, I mean, the... From what I've heard, the graphic novels for this are good. Yes. So, um, the art is beautiful by Joelle Jones. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just think it's one of those things that it's just so rooted, which I'm not even surprised reading, um, Tamaki, mm-hmm. Tamaki, uh, other stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Did you even go to Japan this year? <laughs> it's like I've completely forgotten <laughs> how to yeah. pronounce things. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it's, if you're going to read any Supergirl uh, graphic novel, I would say this one. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and I don't know if she's continuing on or if she's just like one and done origin story and mm-hmm. she just like is bo- rebooting wherever they're going. I, okay. I hope she continues, but maybe it's like too much of a good thing. Um, I know that Mark Andreco, mm-hmm. who's a writer who I haven't read his stuff, but I see him on Screen Junkies, which yeah. is a YouTube thing this all thing the time. That you're always watching. <laughs> yes. Um, and he seems like an awesome individual and I actually kind of read something he organized this year which is my honorable mention which I want to talk about okay but yes I would highly recommend uh, being super super Mm -hmm. Uh, my second one is um of a series uh the eighth in the series saga Mm -hmm. um a lot of people probably know this one it's pretty popular it is sci-fi so there's a planet um full of I think it's called landfallen if I remember correctly they haven't mentioned it in a while Mm -hmm. and then they have their moon which is wreath so there's like winged people and people with horns and they ended up getting into like uh like a war with each other but then the rest of the universe had to pick a side for some reason so this war has been going on forever nobody really like people who ended up picking up sides they're just kind of like i guess we're in this war no one was switzerland (laughs) there was no i haven't haven't come across a switzerland yet um 
But so the female who's from the winged um, planet and mm-hmm. then the male from the horned planet, they end up falling in love. It's very Star Wars oh, Lovers of kind course. of strategy. It's, and they end up like having a kid. So it starts off, oh. the series starts off with her literally giving birth to her child. And it's written from the perspective of of the child who's like retelling oh, the story it's is very, a child very cool horned or winged um she's both oh she's both. her name is hazel oh um her name is hazel and yeah i think each i'll get to this one in particular but each um graphic novel it's almost like she's she learned something for each story mm-hmm. and she's kind of taking you through that you don't really get to like oh what is what did she really learn or you don't know where she's going until you get to the very end mm-hmm. i will say so it's actually written by uh brian k vaughn mm-hmm. he's pretty popular i'm pretty sure in the um community because he has written paper girls which is the graphic mm. novel series i'm doing yes. uh why the last man which i've been meaning to read i have it digitally uh ex machina which was the movie that was if you remember ex machina watch? yes mm-hmm. <laughs> yep <laughs> Um, and then, so yeah, he's written more than that, but, um, I think he's pretty well known and he does a really good job, um, story-wise. And then the artist, um, Fiona Staples, usually a graphic novel will have four different people working on it that are mentioned anyway, Mm -hmm. and that's like the writer, the, um, artist, the colorist, and the letterer. Mm -hmm. I think she does all the other, she does the coloring, she does the art, and she does the lettering. Wow. Because I couldn't find anyone, um. Uh, intense yeah for it and honestly the colors for a sci-fi genre are really really cool yet they're still kind of grounded and i think she's just done a fantastic job with creating the a characters plus. um but why this one in particular i'll try not to get too spoilery with it but with eight because eight and nine came out this year i chose eight mm. first because it deals with um <laughs> the mother she oh. um gets pregnant again but in the the previous number seven she ends up like uh, miscarrying like near the very Aww. like end of her pregnancy mm-hmm. um and then this one is about her uh grappling with she has to s- essentially like um abort i know the baby's already dead so she has to get rid of the baby before it kills her and so uh, but she's struggling with the loss she's uh, very much blaming herself for mm-hmm. like past events and maybe why she lost the baby mm-hmm. um and so is um the husband as well um, but in like different ways and um there's also like a lot of magic um that the horn people know mm-hmm. so the child because it like is in her she can do magic too but she ends up projecting what she thinks her son would look like and like hazel the child is like kind of plays with him and her- Hazel is very, very strong. I don't know, like, how she's being raised, but, like, she's very accepting that, like, he starts to fade, and then it also deals with, like, actually, like, the topic of abortion and all that stuff, and... This is, like, a very... I feel like this is a very uh, applicable book to society in general, because I feel like it deals with issues of racism, mm-hmm. war, yeah, politics, no, and abortion. This is hefty. Yeah, while it's in a sci-fi setting, it is very much mm-hmm. relatable to our... That's what makes it good. Today. Uh, yeah. And so, and there's also other, like, characters, sideline stories going on, and they actually converge in the next volume. And, mm-hmm. like, every single um, volume that comes out, like, you don't know where they're going with this story. It changes on a dime. Like, mm-hmm. literally, you're like, and they could do this forever, and I would throw my money at it <laughs> forever. Take my money! Um, I don't know how long they're going to go, and I don't know. I don't have no idea where it's going to end. Mm-hmm. It's insane. But I'll stop talking about it. I could gush about that. Yeah, they're the going to listen to this, and they're like, oh, Kim's going to pay for whatever, whatever we write. Cool, cool, yeah. cool, cool. <laughs> Just keep writing. 98, <laughs> we'll write it. Um, yeah, and on the art is so good. This one, the art looks fantastic. Yeah, did you read this one? I thought I maybe no, no, gave no. it to you. Okay. I've, uh, my number one is Plutona, Mm -hmm. which is funny enough. It's a one-off. I've been trying to not maybe pick up series because, um. Because your money is leaving you (laughs) at a dramatic rate. Yeah, pretty much. And also, like, when I move, you know how heavy those graphic novels are? You have so many. (laughs) It's ridiculous. Um, but this one, so I've been going for more Mm one-offs. And this one is a one-off. Um, it's, so it's by, uh, Jeff Lemire. Mm -hmm. Um, who is probably pretty well known. He does lots of one-offs or like series that are rooted very real life kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Um, It did like the Underwater Welder, Roughneck, Essex County Trilogy. I've never read any of those. I do want to read more of his stuff because he's a very good writer. Mm Because I find with graphic novels, 
you can get writers where it's it just the dialogue flow feels very disjointed. You're filling in a lot. You're like kind of confused, but mm-hmm. there's a way to like. That's like almost my. I I like reading when I do read graphic novels, which is not often, but you know I love Jesse Jacobs. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's the style I like, where it's a little bit like you don't know what's going on. You kind of have to just figure it out for yourself because the dialogue is not all there, and it's just like things are happening in terms of the pictures. But they're not making sense either, so you just okay. have to d- deal with it. I'm like, I like, I understand. Like, I don't. I love when a graphic novel can tell me what's going on subtly through even just the um, art. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't need dialogue and everything, but sometimes I think, and this is what I have struggles with, like the '90s era of comics or whatever. It's just there's like a language they use mm. that is not accessible. I feel like, and it's not. It doesn't. I just you not your get thing. through it and it takes you out of it a little bit. But no, this one's super well written. And the art, which is by Emmy Lennox. Looks fantastic. It's awesome. I Do think... you want to show the... Oh, of course, yes. Because <laughs> you have them. Yes, I, I have don't them. have any of mine. Um, just the paneling she does and you're able to... So first of all, Plutona is about five kids. It's very. It's been described as very much like Stand By Me, which I've never read, but it's like a group of kids who aren't all friends they just kind of meet up in this one moment and then they're in the woods and they find a dead superhero the best superhero which her name is platona um and they deal with it's it's so i love it because it's one coming of age or it's Mm -hmm. like kids who don't want to tell their parents anything Mm -hmm. because they think they have to keep these things a secret because they're like afraid of like the consequences and like um there's one kid named teddy who loves superheroes so she's not the only superhero there's a bunch of superheroes he like they call it scape spotting cave spotting mm-hmm. um where he's always online it's like where were superheroes seen last mm-hmm. like, he's very much into it mm-hmm. um and so like he finds her dead and he's like you can't tell anyone because if the villains know she's dead what does that mean for us all the other superheroes are like kind of they're trash <laughs> um and so while this is you yeah you kind of get their point of view and they're like they're just dealing with like one identity um just who they are but also like yeah what do you do with this what do you do when you find a dead body in the woods in general not just even a superhero and you're like oh yeah i don't know it's and you also while they're telling the kid's story you get snippets of um plutona's last battle Mm. and she's like working two jobs and then this and she has a kid and you're like oh my gosh it's intense plutona um i don't want to give away the ending there's something that happens in the end i didn't i had no idea where this was going Mm -hmm. and it's after i was done reading i was like oh my goodness the implications or like just (laughs) what these kids now have to deal with Mm -hmm. i uh, I could get into it. We'll talk about it after we're not recording, unless you want to read it. I'm getting but. hyped. <laughs> I'm getting hyped for this no, graphic it's, novel. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's my top three. Okay. Um, I guess I'll jump to my the least favorite book of the year, and I feel mm-hmm. kind of bad. So my least favorite rated two out of ten, which is the lowest rating on my list, is The Road to Character by David Brooks. This was the book that I brought with me to read on our cottage trip that I was struggling to get through. Oh my goodness. And I was thinking about this yesterday and I know why I was so disappointed with this book. Mm -hmm. Because it's kind of like the crappy version of Outliers, which is my like one of my top three. Because the out on the outliers, it takes each chapter takes a concept or an idea or a hypothesis as to why people are extraordinary and it pieces together evidence evidence from multiple multiple sources you could say or like people stories basically it's just the storytelling in outliers is excellent in the road to character each chapter is just one person and they just go into detail about that person's life and what had happened to this person 
And after the first three chapters, you're like, okay, I get it. Okay, they were born to like these circumstances, which made them, which forced them to like go off into the world and like do these things and like learn this in school. And then like something terrible happened in society at some point, which made them like take that extra leap and become extraordinary. And you're like, okay, yeah, that's, that's enough. And it doesn't stop at chapter three, which is unfortunate because I think that's all that needed to, uh, needed to go through. Okay. Because after reading like multiple stories of these people it's not that it's it's not that it's badly written i just lost interest so fast and i think like people how many chapters was it then i don't remember it was too many it was too many chapters for me i just didn't really want to read anymore did you finish it in the cottage weekend i did and it was a struggle (laughs) because i was determined to see it through Mm -hmm. um not only for this challenge but i tend to not like starting a book and not finishing it Mm -hmm. Um, so I had to finish it, but it was never was I tested so much to just drop a book and be like, that's it. That's all I need to read. And my fiance also read this book and was like, yeah, I read the first like four chapters and then I just stopped because I was like, I don't think I need to read anymore. So it's not just me. I don't, I just didn't really enjoy it. Two out of 10. It's pretty bad. And that's the And I'm rating. sorry. I'm sorry, David Brooks. I know people actually enjoyed your book, mm-hmm. but there's gonna be I, people who enjoy the books we don't like. Yeah, I personally, that was that's not one I would recommend to friends and family. Right. Yeah. Um. So my least favorite. Mm-hmm. Um. The widow. The widow. And of course, it's Barton. a novel, right? It looks like I just am shitting on novels. I do love novels. I read some great novels mm-hmm. this year. Um. They just so, didn't make your top ten. I get it. Exactly. We <laughs> or read top a lot. Three, rather. We read a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so, The Widow. First of all, I was in chapters, and it was like a get three for ten bucks, and so I got some classics I've been meaning to read, and then mm-hmm. this one. And I thought this was the one... So there was a movie called Widows that mm-hmm. came out um, recently. I haven't seen it yet, um, but it looked really cool. It was like kind of heisty, and... Mm-hmm. Um, I remember, remember yeah, that, the trailer. Viola Davis, I think, right? Mm-hmm. So... Um, and I thought this, obviously I forgot it was called Widows, and I got Mm -hmm. the Widow thing, and I'm like, oh, this is the book it's based off of. It's actually probably, the movie's probably not based off of any book, now that I think about it. Um, and so I got it, thinking like, oh yeah, cool, I'll read it before the movie comes out, all that stuff. It's not. Whoops. (laughs) I, like, get in, like, second chapter, I'm like, oh, this isn't it at all. (laughs) This ain't it, guys. Um, okay, so it's it's by Fiona Barton, and she's not a bad writer. Mm -hmm. I think the reason I don't, I don't end up liking it is just the characters in it. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's about this kind of long-time investigative case on a missing girl. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and so you, so you're in a bunch of p- different people's heads. So you have like the reporter, mm-hmm. you have the widow, you have, um, the, and then like, it's the main one is the, um, like lead investigator. Mm. Detective um, or whatever. There's a few other people you get into their mind. Which but in those theory the sounds three. like it would make a good story. And again, it wasn't bad, but I did find I was struggling to get through it. Mainly I kind of, <laughs> so the investigator is on this one guy, like, from the Mm get-go. And I think I hate the message that a gut feeling um, and just the way he hounds this guy. Mm -hmm. He and The guy ends up being, like, the one who who did it. And it's all, like, Which is also, like, kind of a disappointing ending. I mean, like, it was well-structured, and I was... I kept thinking, okay, anything could happen, blah, blah, blah. Um, Who knows where it's going to end. And it is emotional, but, like... I don't, I didn't like the investigator as a character, like, mm. it's very much, I think this is set in the early 2000s, and it does bring to light, like, um, the internet use, and, like, how you can lure, like, little kids, or how you can find, like, children through, it's, it, like, it's interesting in that aspect, but, yeah, I, I didn't love the investigator, and the whole, like, this is him, I got him, nobody's like... Doesn't make for a very complex story yeah. when, like, right off the bat you have someone who's like, oh no, I know this is the one. And I guess, like, it is also, like, a good look to the widow, like, her husband is the one. I'm literally spoiling this book of whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you're not really recommending the book to anyone, so go ahead and, and like, spoil this it. This is why, like, because I don't have a problem, like, the writing was fine, mm-hmm. I didn't think it was interesting, I think just in the end, so... Because you do get, like... The widow's perspective on how 
she ends up grappling. Like, she trusts her husband, mm-hmm. but then she eventually comes around to, like, oh, he did this. So it's, like, she's grappling with that, and that's sad, and it's, it's I don't know, it's a whole thing <laughs> that I'm, like, I didn't love the characters in it. Mm. It was finely written, and, I yes, I do hate the whole idea, like, oh, they, because with this day and age, how so many people are arrested when they didn't do it, or they're, mm-hmm. like, sent to prison um, when they didn't do it, because it's, like, we got you on circumstantial evidence, and we had this gut feeling, and we're gonna put you away. Like, I kind of hate that mentality, and so that mm-hmm. was literally it throughout the thing. And I almost was like hoping the investigator was wrong the whole time because I wanted mm-hmm. him to be wrong. Yeah. So it's not, yeah. So Ugh, basically, you're just such a dick. <laughs> be wrong. This is like my least favorite, mainly because of just how it turned out. Yeah. The it's hard. Of it. I feel like sometimes when an author has written a book where none of the characters are particularly likable, the story has to be really freaking good. Like, the plot has to be amazing in order for you to be like, oh, I hated all the characters, but I loved this book. Yeah. Yeah, so... I mean, it's a New York Times bestseller. And it has a quote from Stephen King saying, if you liked Gone Girl and the Girl on the Train, you might want to pick up this. And I mean, like... I have never read those books. I've seen those movies, and those Mm -hmm. are very compelling movies. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's like characters I didn't like, and maybe it was just like the whole concept of that gut feeling arrest. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. So mm-hmm. that's that's it. Are we doing an honorable <clears throat> mention? I think we've got time for a quick shout out. So another nine out of ten rating on my list was Bonk by Mary Roach. She does a lot of like science writing. She basically goes through the history of science and discovery in one field and bonk is on the history the history of science and discovery in the field of sex research and it was just hilarious it was informative it was like a fun read got through it really quickly it was just it was it was fun it was a really fun time and i think you read it i did read it yeah after i got back from my trip Mm -hmm. what did you think about it i thought it was good yeah i liked it i can't say i remember a lot of the science behind it now that was many months ago. I mean, so. it just takes you through some ridiculous yes. things that science, that quote unquote yeah. was science or was not science. And it also talks about people trying to discover. Yeah. Like, how do yeah. you discover when something is so taboo? <laughs> like, what do mm-hmm. you do? Because people think, because it was, did it touch on like, pe- it's hard to do sex research because people are like, Oh, you're a pervert, or you like want. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's a fun one. If you're interested in like science books that are kind of fun, then give it a read. <laughs> we also read, I also read another one of uh, Mary Roach's books called Spook, and that one was on science and discovery of like death and the afterlife, mm-hmm. which I didn't find as fun. But Bonk, I would recommend. It's a fun one. Mm-hmm. I'm recommending. So I think. I wanted to do a novel, so I could, I'm going to do another graphic novel. Um, it's called Love is Love. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an anthology series. It was organized by Mark and, D- and Draco, which I mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just an um, anthology series, just essentially, if nobody knows, it's just a bunch of different authors and artists uh, doing short stories, and it's all within this. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the proceeds, went. it was organized around the time of the Orlando shooting, mm-hmm. uh, like club shooting, and uh, some of the proceeds would go to those who the suffered. Victims. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I ended up picking it up February or something, I think. But I think a lot of the stories in it were just very impactful. I think the art was beautiful. And it's just one of those ones that if you're someone who doesn't, just wants like short stories and just from maybe a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. you don't want to own like a 15 book series of graphic novels. <laughs> They're great. So, yeah. So, I would I would recommend that one as well. So. Oh, okay. Cool. So, for this, for 2002K19, uh, I think we've unanimously decided that we are going to do this challenge again. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that you would like to accomplish for this year? Like, books you want to get through or, like, an increase in the volume of reading? I don't know if I can do an increase. And yeah, super... five five graphic novels to one of my novels is quite a bit. Sometimes they're really easy to get through if it's mainly pictures, but mm-hmm. like I do spend time like looking at the pictures and really trying to absorb if like the art's beautiful and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Um, and I really only, you know me, like there has to be. I will. I want 
art mm -hmm. that's good before I have good writing. Mm -hmm. Because if it's not art that I enjoy, mm -hmm. and obviously there's many different um, artists out there and people like different art styles. I'm If you looked at my graphic novel section, you'd probably get what kind of style I like. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, if, I'm, if I don't like the art, I probably can't even enjoy the story mm -hmm. as much. So, um, Which makes sense for a graphic novel. Yeah. I think maybe I'll try to read more novels instead of graphic novels. Mm -hmm. um, I probably got a few plays I want to read. I, like, I don't know if I need to. I think I want to just be very selective in my books right from the get-go. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to read more classics. Mm. I think I've been uh, skimming out on those, uh, those classics. I got like classics Journey to great. the Center of the Earth and The Bell Jar in my room. Mm. So I will take a crack at those. Mm -hmm. And then I have a Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, oh, book. Oh, of course. Got it. RBG. Must, must read. A must read. So that's that's in the new your year. Your one true love, RBG. What are your... I think, I think, I don't... Here's the bad thing about New Year's resolutions. When you try to over mm -hmm. overdo it, you will fail. And then what's the point? Mm -hmm. So I think we made a very realistic resolution to read at least one novel or however many graphic novels that is per month mm -hmm. and I don't want to change that the whole point is to read more than we would normally do if this wasn't in place and it's good that we're doing it together because then it's like we have to keep each other accountable mm -hmm. if we fail then it's like you suck we can't be friends anymore um so I don't want to increase the volume I do have a a few Margaret Atwoods on my shelf that I've been meaning to get through. I'm trying to get through all of her novels. So we'll see how that goes because her books are quite hefty. Hefty. I do like her writing style. Um, it's a little darker. It's a little more slow paced, which I think I'm into at this point in my life. So we'll see how that goes. Pumped. Pumped. <laughs> Margaret Atwood, I'm coming at you. <laughs> So I guess we'll close out. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye. Bye.